Hello guys and welcome back to another video and in this video I am going to be finishing up the light installation for phase two of the Alvaville Railroad. Here I'm installing a 1x3. Uh, I'll be mounting the light to the 1x3. Uh, one thing I did want to mention was in the previous video as I was going over the materials list I had mentioned a one half inch uh, quick clamp that attaches to the junction box. This is incorrect. Um, you could use the one half inch if you used one half inch conduit, but since I used the three eighths inch, I had to uh, go back to Home Depot and purchase the three eighths inch. So here I just quick clamp the light fixture to the one by three that I just installed and I take the lamp cord and I'm just kind of getting a feel for how the lamp cord is going to run. So before I attached any lights I went ahead and attached the 1x3's that I would be mounting the lights to. Here I'm actually attaching the middle section. Uh, it's a 1x3 that's 8 feet long. It was really nice because it spanned four of my twin bracket arms and it really helped tighten everything up on the layout. It also afforded me the opportunity to move the middle light to the left or to the right. So actually in phase two I'm going to be incorporating a deep ravine that'll uh, be having a river flowing through it, a small river. And I didn't want to put the light directly overhead but I wanted it to be close enough to highlight some of the details of the ravine. So here I'm actually attaching a stringer to the end of the twin bracket arms. Now those twin bracket arms are about five feet long and a little bit on the flimsy side so I needed to install a stringer here to help stabilize. Also the stringer needed to be installed uh, as, a, as a way for me to cut smaller one by threes and have uh, attached those to the stringer so that I'll have something to attach my balance to. So the five foot twin bracket arms that I'm installing the stringer on are actually the turn back area for phase two. Here the main line will turn back and the locomotive will be able to make its way back to phase one. So after I got my stringer installed, I uh, installed the last 1x3 for the light and I pretty much just centered it in the turn back area. Okay, so here I have all the lights quick clamped in place and that middle light I'm actually going to end up moving it to the left about six inches. Uh, but I did this just to try to get a feel, look at the spacing between the lights and see if it's uh, what I actually wanted. And uh, here I'm just kind of zooming in to show you where I'm actually going to be mounting the, the junction box. Initially, I was thinking about drilling a hole through the bottom of the light and knocking out the uh, center knockout there on the junction box and bringing the lamp cord up to the junction box that way. But after thinking about it, I wanted to move it to the left about six inches. Like I said, I wanted the light to be a little bit closer to the ravine that I previously mentioned. So after I had the lights where I wanted them, I went ahead and anchored the lights to the 1x3's that I had previously installed. So here I've got the junction box and I'm just knocking out the slugs where I want the conduit to come into the junction box. As I mentioned earlier, uh, this is the wrong size squeeze clamps. These are the one half inch. Again, you know, if you were using one half inch conduit it would work, but since I'm using 3 8 inch conduit, 
I had to go back and get the 3 8 inch uh, clamps. I think in the latter part of the video you'll see what the 3 8 inch clamps look like. But I went ahead and saved this part of the video and didn't delete it because you know it just it definitely conveys the idea of how to do it. So there I was just pointing at the hole that I drilled for the lamp cord to run from the middle light fixture into the bottom of the uh, junction box. Okay so here I'm running the conduit through the twin bracket arms. Now uh, before I did this I uh, drilled some holes out using a 3 4 inch spade bit and the reason I'm running the conduit through the holes right now is not to mount it but just to get a, an approximate length so that I can cut the conduit with a hacksaw. I pretty much follow that same procedure with the lamp cord just to get an approximate length. Okay, so here I'm just feeding the lamp wire through the conduit. Okay, so here's what the, the light fixture looks like. You can see the, the white wire of the light fixture, which is the positive, and the black wire, which is the common. Now, I connected those with wire nuts, uh, respectively, to the what I was calling the positive and common wire of the lamp wire. I was just pointing at where the ground actually connects to the inside housing of the light. If you have problems with these shop lights as far as the, the bulb uh, sockets wanting to stay in place, just take some black electrical tape like I did and just tape the, the wire to the top of the fixture. That will help to hold everything still while you put the plate back on or the cover back on. So there's the, what the inside of the junction box looks like and I have all the wires running into the junction box now. Now it's a matter of just trimming them up and uh, attaching them together and uh, putting some wire nuts on them. Okay, so here's the housing for the light switch, and I needed to drill two holes in the back, one for the conduit and one for the power uh, wire coming in from the wall. So I'm using a 3 4 inch spade bit and a 1 half inch spade bit. Now the 3 4 inch was just a little small, so I had to end up getting the Dremel out, kind of reaming the hole a little bit in order to get the 3 8 inch clamp to fit in the hole. Also, I saved the power cords uh, for the lights, and so I was able to uh, re uh, reuse that, repurpose that, and use it here. And as you can see, it just snapped right into place. Fit really well. Okay, so here's what the inside of the junction box looks like after it's trimmed up and has the wing nuts on it. Okay, so here's what the light switch looked like. Um, now, what I'm be pointing at is with the screwdriver is the actual common wires for both the power wire coming in from the wall outlet which is white and the black wire which would be what I was calling the common wire for the lamp cord so there I'm pointing at the wall outlet common wire and the black one there that I'm pointing at that's the common wire for the lamp cord now the positive wire for the power cord coming in from the wall outlet where I'm pointing now that gets twisted together with the positive wire for the lamp cord and I uh, put a, a, a wire nut on those so that's how that's wired up right there and on the underside of the light switch is where the, the negative wires get attached to the screw I try to get a shot on it here but the camera just kind of it's blurry it can't get in that close you can see kind of that greenish tint there that's the screw where the the ground wire coming in from the lights and the ground wire from the wall outlet gets attached okay guys so there's the end result and I'm pleased with how it turned out I think it's going to be a sufficient lighting for phase two 
Uh, I do like the fluorescent lighting. Uh, I like the uh, uh, the ambient lighting that it gives off, and you know, I like it. it's more of a uh, kind of a non-directional lighting, if you will. And uh, you know, I, I like that's what I like about the fluorescent lights. So uh, yeah, just uh, checking my light switch there, make sure everything turns off and on as it should. And, you know, I'm just looking forward to, uh, to getting started on phase two, uh, laying track and everything. So, yeah, there I need to tighten up that that, uh, that brace there for the conduit. Uh, right here where the L girders aren't touching, this is where the ravine's going to be going in at. So I'm looking forward to, to building on that. And, uh, yeah, up here is just where I had to drill the use the 3 4 inch spade bit to drill through the twin bracket arms for the conduit. So, guys, I hope this was helpful, and we will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.